grains taking in the stress and as such it deforms plastically right it deforms plastically because there's a sudden sudden there's a sudden stretch or there's a sudden permanent set in this plastic in the grains and as such from b to c1 there's sudden plastic deformation right so from o to b we have the boundary regions we have the boundary materials that are taking in the stress which are essentially elastic and as such we have some kind of elastic behavior right from b to c1 this boundary region fails because of the appearance of luteal lines this boundary region fails so the grains now take in the stress and as such there is some kind of a sudden permanent set on the grains and as such we have this b to c1 now at c1 again what happens is that the body then decides that well i have taken mm, a lot of strain without further increase in stress let's now behave normally and now i will continue to take i will deform but definitely but that will be with increase in stress so from c1 to d1 this zone is called the strain hardening region wherein there is definitely an increase in strain but that happens with an increase in stress and d1 is the point wherein we call it the ultimate strength d1 we call it ultimate strength and after d1 the same thing happens and again this load decreases the reason being from b to b1 the load decreases because there is sudden plastic stretching at d1 also the same thing happens and the load decreases and essentially at e1 the material fails now the re this region between d1 and e1 is characterized by some kind of a thing called necking that is if this is some kind of a material we have then at some definite at a definite plane there will be a sudden decrease in the cross section and essentially it will be like this and at e1 it essentially breaks now this shaded region or uh, i should say this hash line is my is the way the material necks right uh, and this is i think all so a brief synopsis is like this that a material any material is composed of generally two regions number one we have the grains and number two we have the boundary regions in the elastic portion of the curve that is from o to b we have the boundary materials taking effect and these boundary materials are essentially elastic so what we have is that some kind of a curve where there will be an increase in strain but there will be an increase in stress also and this region is basically when you release the load it comes back without any permanent deformation now from b to c1 what basically happens is that at point b there is the appearance of luteal line and the boundary region with breaks that is the, the elastic material fails so from b to c1 the grains take into f takes effect the grains takes the effect and as such they have some kind of a sudden permanent set from b to c1 at c1 again it behaves in a sort of a more generalized plastic behavior and from c1 to d1 essentially we have the strain hardening zone at d1 the material fails and at uh, then the, there is a region the region between d1 to e1 is basically the region where we have some kind of a necking and uh, at e1 the material fails and the point d1 is basically the point wherein there is the ultimate strength so this is basically the mechanical properties of yeah i have i forgot one thing and that is from this curve three points are pretty important number one the proportional limit number two the yield point and number three ductility and the measure of the ductility is basically given by the elongation in length of the specimen or the reduction in the cross sectional area right so basically you have two parameters to judge the ductility of a material number one what you have is called the reduction in length or fsa that is del l by del by l suppose or you have some kind of parameter called let's say i should say d which is defined by a0 which is the original cross sectional area minus a1 reduced cross sectional area by a0 and this two are basic measures of ductility right and uh, i think this is all for this lecture thanks a lot and uh, the next lecture will be all about uh, failure theories of materials and then i'll move to structural analysis and uh, if i have left something if i have left some thing of uh, strength of material which may crop up in my mind later then i will definitely put this uh, in 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 the strength of material course so the next lecture will be all about failure theories of materials and then we'll move to structural analysis thanks a lot for listening thank you